We've spoken a lot about who the Antichrist is. We know that that is the kingdom of papal Rome that began counterfeit Christianity, that started counterfeit Christianity, this big lie, and that it includes the ten toes that are coming out of her in Daniel 2. Remember that this is the fifth kingdom. Starts with Babylon. Babylon fell to Medo-Persia. Medo-Persia fell to Greece. Greece fell to pagan Rome. Pagan Rome fell to papal Rome. That's that fifth kingdom with the ten toes coming out. It is uh, the feet and the toes made partly of iron and partly of baked clay. And then you see that description of that iron kingdom of Rome. You see that description in what Paul was talking about when he said that people were like sawed, being sawed in two and fed to wild animals. These are things that Rome was doing. It was an iron, a strong, terrifying kingdom. And that's spoken of as well in Daniel 7. Let's actually go to Daniel 7 and let's read about these two kingdoms. Okay, so we're going to start at verse 7. The first three kingdoms have been described. Now they're talking about the fourth kingdom. And these kingdoms are going to be the same kingdoms that were discussed in Daniel 2. It's not going to change. And we know from Daniel 2 that it starts out with Babylon. So if you know anything about history, then you're going to understand who took down who. This is irrefu- These are irrefutable facts that the kingdoms go in that order. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, papal Rome. And then papal Rome fell to atheistic communism and atheistic communism fell to the United States. And the eighth kingdom that rises again is papal Rome. But papal Rome has 10 toes coming out of her in Daniel 2. And in Revelation, she's referred to as Babylon the Great, the mother of all prostitutes. Those are the prostitutes that are coming out of her. It is a divided kingdom as described in Daniel 2. So Daniel 7 verse 7. After that in my vision, we're talking about the fourth kingdom. At night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. What is the fourth kingdom? It is papal, excuse me, pagan Rome. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. Okay, so in Daniel 2, we see ten toes coming out of the fifth kingdom. Now we're seeing ten horns coming out of the fourth kingdom. Don't conflate the two. One's the fourth kingdom, one's the fifth kingdom. Too many people conflating these. The ten horns that came out of Rome, pagan Rome, were the ten Germanic tribes that were trampling pagan Rome. And those ten Germanic tribes became Western Europe. These are key players in the end times. The ten toes that are coming out of the feet of the fifth kingdom in Daniel 2 are the 10 main de- uh, main denominations that bore out of Catholicism in the Reformation. And yes, there are more denominations that exist today, but these are the original 10 main denominations that bore out of that harlot Catholic Church and became the counterfeit Christianity that you know today. What do they do? They continue in all of her prostitutions. That's why they're called prostitutes too. The pagan image of the cross, Easter, Christmas, Sunday, Sabbath, counterfeit tithing, venerating and exalting man, adulterating the word of God. These are just a few. Changing his set times. We're told that the Antichrist is going to do that. And so if this is the kingdom of the Antichrist, then they're going to do what the Antichrist does. And we're told in the word that the Antichrist changes God's set times, attempts to change his set times. Well, guess what? When you're going after the Gregorian calendar and God established his calendar, that's an attempt to change his set times. When you change his Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day of the week, that is an attempt to change his set times. When you say, no, holy days are not for us. Those are for Jews. Those are the burden of Jews. And you mean ethnic Jews. You don't understand what it means to actually be a Jew, to be circumcised in heart, as is described by Paul in the New Testament. So you deny the command to observe God's set times, his holy days, his appointed times, even though Christians in the New Testament were observing those days, hello, read Acts, and you change his set times to pagan holidays like Easter as a replacement for Passover. That is the behavior of the Antichrist. If that's what you're doing, you're still in it. You are in the Antichrist, and you need to understand that those who receive that mark of the beast, those who identify with that beast, will the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no salvation 
for those who receive that mark. That mark is in your heart. That mark is in your heart. That's what Jesus told us. You're defiled by what is coming from your heart, and it comes out of your right hand, your deeds, your forehead, your thoughts, the way you think, and the things that you profess. I know so many people who don't want to let go of their Christmas. They will not listen to the things I say because they will not let go of their pagan holidays. Do you understand how serious it is? It's not just like a preference, guys. This is an identification. This is what these people have chosen to identify themselves with. That is the kingdom that they're in. And they will be assigned a place outside with the hypocrites where there will be, will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because that is exactly what they are. They swear falsely in his name. They do not care about him. They want their false Messiah and all of the promises that they think they're invoking. They will not be saved. All right, back to this fourth beast. It had iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts and it had 10 horns. Now, this kingdom is the kingdom that crucified Jesus. This is Rome. That's the kingdom Paul was talking about. That is not the Antichrist kingdom that's going to rise at the very end, but there are parts of that kingdom, right? Parts of iron that came from that kingdom. Now, all you got to do is look into history. All you got to do is look at things like the Spanish Inquisition. What was happening then? Same things. People being tortured, sawed in half, fed to wild animals, burned at the stake. You don't need to look any further as to what the Antichrist will be doing. That is exactly what the Antichrist will be doing again. Now listen to what happens. While I was looking, excuse me, while I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them. And three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully. It's starting to describe the Antichrist, so pay attention. As I looked, thrones were set in place and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. I I want to remind you who the beast is. The beast is counterfeit Christianity. Does counterfeit Christianity speak boastfully? They are so arrogant, thinking that they are invoking something without any obedience whatsoever to what God has commanded, without any relationship with him. It is detestable. It is so disgusting to me at the core of my being that anyone would think that they've got this in the bag when they follow false teachers, gather around themselves many people to tell them what their it teachers to tell them what their itching ears want to hear. Watch shows of false messiahs like the chosen and they can't be bothered to obey and they can't be bothered to listen. And and listen, I'm in a unique position where I'm telling people all the time and I see how how wicked counterfeit Christianity is. Even those who listen to this message, but don't obey. Just because you're listening to this message does not mean you're going to make it. You need to obey. You need to be assembling with the people of God and not in some fake mega church or a building is not a church, guys. Newsflash, a denomination, a tradition is not a church. The church is defined in John 4. As those who worship him in the truth and in the spirit. And he overtly, clearly says, not those who are worshiping in a temple and not those who are worshiping in Jerusalem. You're the temple of God. You have to be worshiping inside of you, in your heart, by the spirit. He is spirit and you have a spirit inside of you that he communicates with because He is spirit. That's what it means when he's talking in the spirit. He communicates with you in a place that no one else can communicate with you. That's where you need to live. And then you assemble with other believers who are doing the same thing. We assemble. We don't meet in a a building. We're all across the United States. One in Mexico. We've had some in Europe. We've never even seen each other. We assemble in the spirit. 
online and we worship him in the truth based on his word, not some human being at a pulpit. I am not replacing your covenant when we assemble. I share just the same as you guys share. I share what he's teaching me. You share what he's teaching you. That's how Paul taught us to worship. What we have been calling a church or the church is not a church at all to God. Those are prostitutes. That whole setup of some pastor or someone giving a lesson up at a pulpit is not what Paul established. Paul said, each of you brothers and sisters needs to bring something. Brothers and sisters. So he says in verse 11, then I continue to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and his body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. Now, the reason, part of the reason I'm reading this to you is because you've been taught in counterfeit Christianity that the Antichrist is a man. And if you understood that it was a kingdom, maybe you thought that there was going to be a king that was going to be speaking. But this is a kingdom. And in that kingdom is counterfeit Christianity. So what is this going to look like? It's going to look like counterfeit Christianity speaking boastfully. And then is going to rise that kingdom of papal Rome that started this whole madness. But all of them are going to be persecuting God's people. They're going to rise in power. And this is going on right now. They have not risen in power for that 42-month reign, but they are rising right now. You should be able to see it. But you need to understand, you need to perceive what you're looking for. Pay attention to the things being taught right now. This Zionist mentality that there is a physical land that is due to ethnic Jews that exists in counterfeit Christianity. It's so interesting how many false teachers are teaching right now where this is in Bible prophecy, but they don't see in Bible prophecy that when things like this are happening to God's people, quote unquote, that it's judgment. They don't see that. They don't preach that. Oh no, because they would be accused of being anti-Semitic, which is the worst kind of accusation of racism there is. This is a narrative, guys. It's a narrative put out by the Antichrist. The truth is this has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with what God does to his people in judgment when they spurn him. And the biblical prophecy that they are confused about is the result of them conflating ethnicity with what the New Testament tells us a Jew is. A Jew is one who is circumcised in heart. Not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Not all who are descended from Abraham are Abraham's children. You are land. You are, if you are in Christ, the bride, Jerusalem, land, beautifully dressed for her husband coming out of the sky. God is pulling his people out of the nations and bringing them to, the land, to Jerusalem, to that land. What is that land? If he's opened your eyes, he's pulling you out of the nations, not physically, spiritually. He's pulling you out of those nations and he's connecting you with other like-minded believers. And I've heard many people come on this channel and say, God told me this is where I am to worship. And then I've also seen many people say, you know, suddenly decide, even though God said that to, to them and they have said that God said that to them suddenly decide that, no, this isn't what it, what I imagined. I want to meet in person. I want the glory of being wise. And I'm only one member of this body among other members, but I want to be able to exalt myself because what I know Hebrew, these things are stupid. That kind of self glory and self centeredness completely debunks Everything that God told you. I've heard people weeping on my voicemails. I feel like I'm home. This is what I've always wanted. Weeping on my voicemail. All for them to fall off because of something so small and so dumb that they did not take back to God. Even though God testified, this is where you are to be. So these people have been spoken about in the word. Because I tried to cleanse you and you would not be clean. You will not be clean again until my wrath has subsided. These people have been written about. They'll be here for a while during the Antichrist reign, if not all the way up to the 
very end of that 45 days of God's great wrath between the abomination of desolation and the time of the resurrection. And that's the best that can happen for them. Because if they don't make it through that, if they don't endure it through that and let go of these ideas that they have in their own mind of what this is supposed to look like, you know, you showed up a minute ago and now you're calling the shots on how this is supposed to look. Come on. Where were you before? Where were you when God was building this thing? That's what it looks like. God is bringing people out of the nations. He's bringing them together as land, as Israel. What is the beast that's rising right now? It's all those who are following after those false prophecies, those false teachers, making up their own rules about how they want things to go in God's church rather than submitting to him, rather than remembering what he said to them when they came here. The best thing that can happen to someone who is shown what is true, but has their own, their own ideas about how this is going to go, and falls off and decides, no, I don't want that, God. I want it to look like this. The best that can happen for them is to be brought very low during the Antichrist reign. The other alternative, the only other alternative, is that they continue in that counterfeit mark of the beast that's coming from their heart, that is affecting the way they think, that is affecting their deeds, that is affecting what's coming out of their mouth. The only other alternative for them is to be thrown in the lake of burning sulfur with the beast because that's what they chose to identify with. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. All right, let's go back to Daniel 7, verse 19. Then I wanted to know the meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying. With its teeth, its iron teeth and bronze claws, the beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the 10 horns on its head and about the other horn that came up. The other horn that came up, before which three of them fell. That is the Antichrist. The horn that looked more imposing than the others and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. Guess what? Part of what I'm hearing in these counterfeit uh, revelations or teachings about end times is that Israel has already gone and possessed the land. Uh, when do they possess the land? When do they possess the kingdom? When does Abraham have those children that are so numerous as the stars in the sky? When does all of that, when is all of that fulfilled guys? It's not fulfilled here, nor is it what we are thinking with our carnality. It has been explained to us in the new Testament. If we don't care about truth, then you know what? That's what we're going to follow. All of those false teachings. But it is clear as day in the word. You don't possess the kingdom until that resurrection happens. You can see that God's people are being persecuted, that the power of God's people is being broken. Don't tell me that they have possessed physical land before that happens. Because the word says this is going to be an eternal kingdom. That is when they possess the land. Why are there wars being fought over land, physical land? I'm going to tell you right now. Because of a carnal interpretation of the word, because of wickedness in people's hearts who have their hearts set on what is in this life and not what is in the next life, in the age to come. Why do counterfeit Christians believe this? Because they have their hearts set on this being the responsibility of ethnic Jews. They don't want their covenant. They want all of the promises of Jesus without the covenant. They want to believe that this is the burden of ethnic Jews. They also want to believe that by not questioning anything that ethnic Jews are doing, that they're invoking a blessing. Why would you not question what God's people are doing. Like, is that the rule we go by? Well, because you're Christian, I don't question anything that you do. You're telling me you're Christian. Well, yeah, that's what a lot of counterfeit Christians do. Oh, but he's Christian. I, someone said to me one day, but Lady Gaga is Christian. Oh my goodness. Are you crazy? Because I'm not crazy. So basically I was supposed to be quiet about what I was saying 
No, I look at the fruit. I don't listen to your words. I look at your fruit. And then I see if your words are mashing up with what you claim in your heart. I don't believe in the cake and eat it too gospel. I believe in the joy that's set before me. I believe in storing up treasures for myself in heaven, not in this world. Israel, spiritual Israel, does not possess the land, the kingdom, you're the land, until the resurrection. Let's be clear. Verse 23. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on the earth. It will be different from all other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom, ten Germanic tribes. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to set, excuse me, change the set times and laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times, and half a time. But the court will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and the rulers, all rulers will obey, excuse me, will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts and my face turned pale, and I kept the matter to myself. Do you understand the timeline of things? Because you need to understand the timeline so that you can understand and discern when false teachers are speaking falsely. And guess what? When you discern that false teachers are speaking falsely, you dust your feet. You don't say, well, I like their teaching style, or they're good looking, or they're entertaining, or anything like that. You don't say that. Either, they're, either they are a person of truth speaking on the authority of the one who sent them or they're not. They either speak the truth or they don't. It's not like, oh, they're using their anointing incorrectly. That's stupid. God's not an idiot. He does not anoint someone who, with whom he has not counted the cost. People love to say that about me. They love to say, you're brilliant. I, this is not my brilliance, by the way. I don't claim that. They love to say things like when they're, when they're upset about something that I said, oh, I've learned so much from you and you definitely have in-depth understanding of the word, but dot, dot, dot. But dot, dot, dot. And usually the but is you said something I didn't like. You hurt my feelings. So they acknowledge that God has testified to what I'm saying, but then they go on their own understanding and they don't go back to God to be dealt with on the things that I'm saying that they don't like. That's wickedness. I tried to cleanse you, but you would not be cleansed. Therefore, you will not be clean again until my wrath against you has subsided. That's the bottom line, guys. You think it's going to be easier that way? Or do you think it would be easier now to just go to God and ask him if what I'm saying is true? Receive it now so that you and your children who depend on you don't have to stay here. So now you know who the Antichrist is. You know what's going to happen. Now you need to understand the false prophet. Revelation 13. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea. And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. By the way, the dragon is Satan. We know that from Revelation 12. People say that the dragon is Rome. I heard Kenneth Cox say that. No, the the dragon is not Rome. You believe these things, it changes your entire doctrine. The dragon, verse 9 of Revelation 12. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. Who's the dragon? The dragon is the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. It literally just said that in the previous chapter. I don't know where Kenneth Cox would get something like that. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea. Satan stood on the shore of the sea. And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had 10 horns and seven heads and 10 crowns on its horns. 10 horns are what? Western Europe, seven heads, the seven kingdoms. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, papal Rome, atheistic communism, the United States, seven heads, seven kingdoms with 10 crowns. Anytime you see a crown, they've been given authority on its horns, on those 10 horns that became Western Europe. And on each head, a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, and but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. The dragon, Satan, gave the beast, these kingdoms, his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but 
the fatal wound had been healed. What are the heads? Seven heads. One of the kingdoms had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. Now in Revelation 17, you see that this kingdom of the Antichrist, the fifth kingdom of papal Rome, fell. So it was, it was in power, then it fell, and it is to rise again. Was, now is not, from the perspective of John, in the vision, in the sixth kingdom. In the vision, he's in the sixth kingdom of atheistic communism. But it will rise again for that 42-month reign, then it will go to its destruction. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. Okay? The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. Okay, so we've talked about what does this actually look like? I, I posted a video yesterday talking about the key players of the end times. Europe, the United States as the false prophet. We talked about how a harlot is riding the beast. So who's controlling who? If the harlot is riding the beast, she is controlling the beast. The harlot is a church. The beast is a government. So right now what you're seeing is the government. But the puppeteer is that counterfeit church of that counterfeit Christianity. Is papal Rome. That Laudato C, papal Rome that has a permanent seat in the United Nations is influencing, testifying to science. That's what Laudato C directs you to. That's the God that it, that it sends you to. Pray for the earth? What do you mean pray for the earth? Jesus is not concerned about the heart of the earth. He's concerned about your heart. The word says his people need to return to him. So what is pray for the earth? It's that counterfeit idea that you can scream a spirit away and pray away what God's sending. It is a lack of understanding. It is a counterfeit covenant. And that is what the Antichrist extends. Everything that is anti-covenant. God's covenant says return to me and I will return to you and I will heal you. He does not say pray for what I'm sending to you to teach you to go away. You don't do that, guys. That is such a counterfeit Christian idea, getting around in your, your small groups and making your prayer lists of what you're going to pray to go away. How? That is such a lack of understanding of the actual covenant that God extended. God wants you dealing with your sin. He wants you recognizing that when you have illness, when you have disease, when he sends things to the earth, that you need to get in deep with him and do the things he said. Weep, wail, mourn, lament, put on sackcloth and ashes, humble yourself, turn from your wicked ways, repent and bear the fruit of repentance, which is change. Actually return to him and receive his ministry in your life, in your heart. Don't just draw near to him with your lips while your heart is far from him. You need to recognize that that Laudato C is a representation of the schemes of the devil looking like a lamb but speaking like a dragon. The message of the devil, but looking like a lamb. It is a covering of what is the lamb. Jesus is the lamb. So it looks godly, has the appearance of godliness, but denies his power. Laudato C leads you back to the false god of science. This, god, this, this scientific field that denies that there even is a god, that there even is a creator who is Christ, what does the word tell you about those who deny Christ? They are the Antichrist. That is the God that Francis, the Pope, is leading you to? And is he doing it like, is he out on the front line? Absolutely not. Because Catholicism is a coward. They don't want to be scrutinized. So they let everybody else do their dirty work for them. That's what's going on in Hollywood right now with, you know, Mark Wahlberg and Jim Caviezel, Mel Gibson, they're all rebranding the Catholic Church while the Catholic Church stays silent. They don't want to be scrutinized. Are they going to put out a movie on sex trafficking, scapegoating another, you know, another satanic kingdom? I mean, this is just so crazy how Satan works. He makes this big mess and then pits his people against each other. Yes, Hollywood is evil. Absolutely. I don't deny that Hollywood is involved in sex trafficking whatsoever. But the biggest sex trafficking ring there has ever been in this world is the Harlot Catholic Church. And yet these three self-proclaimed Catholics make a movie 
to deflect from all of these years that God has been exposing the Catholic Church for what they've been doing to children and women and men. You don't think that those men, Mark Wahlberg, Jim Caviezel, Mel Gibson, that they were commissioned by the Catholic Church to do this? To get the finger off of them? That's exactly what they did with Tertullian, the Catholic theologian that they commissioned to rewrite the word to say that the Antichrist is not Catholicism, but is a man. These are their schemes. These are their tactics. Get, get the focus off of them. They let everybody else do their dirty work. And then they'll decide later what they're going to take credit for. Then they'll venerate. Later on, they'll venerate someone in order to claim that for themselves. It's not really to acknowledge the work that's been done. It's to covet it and claim it for themselves. So let's go back to this Revelation 13, verse 3. The whole world was filled with wonder. So first of all, it says, One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. So followed this, all these key players, okay? And the agenda, the of one mind, God says in Revelation 17 that he has put it in their heart to be of one mind. And why has he done that? Because they're all going to have this same mentality. You need to understand this beast in NATO, in the United Nations, in the European Union. These are key players of the end times. And this particular beast of papal Rome, this particular kingdom, has a permanent seat on the United Nations, in the United Nations. And that agenda, she's the puppeteer. That church, that false religion is the puppeteer that is forming that agenda. We're all looking at it and going like, what? Like, how is this going to solve anything? Those of us who have any wisdom whatsoever are looking at it and saying, uh, I don't think solar panels and electric vehicles are going to quite solve this problem. But how many people are into this? How many people do believe in this? I mean, if you go on videos of, of what's happening in the earth, look at the mentality of people. There are some who call people back into repentance and they're mocked. The majority of them are you know, saying stupid things like respect, respect for mother nature, whoever that is. And others are saying so boastfully and arrogantly, we have to cut emissions and fossil fuels. What's counterfeit Christianity saying? Are they saying you need to return to God? No, they're saying we need to be good stewards of the earth. That's their counterfeit Christian language for submit to science. That's their counterfeit Christian language for we don't know our covenant. Now, there's something interesting that's said here. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshipped the beast and asked, who is like the beast who can wage war against it? You hear that word worship? They are submitting themselves to this false gospel in the world. They are submitting themselves to this false god of science. They are laying themselves down, prostrate before this false god of science. Are they prostrate before God? Are they returning to him? Are they understanding their covenant? No, this is an anti-Christ, anti-covenant. It is in opposition to the covenant that Christ extended to us. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Will they know? Will all the inhabitants of the earth know that they're worshiping that beast? Not necessarily. You heard earlier that the dragon, they're worshiping the dragon because the dragon has given authority to that beast. He's hiding behind that beast. So the exact scheme that I talked about with Catholicism doing this with Jim Caviezel, Mark Wahlberg, Mel Gibson, or Tertullian hiding behind the work that they commission other people to do, it's the same cowardice of the devil. Same spirit, same schemes, same spirit, same cowardice. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Those people who are laying down on the roads and, you know, protesting these, these climate activists, stopping up traffic with their stupidity, 
Who are they worshiping? They don't necessarily have to be using religious language, guys, or even understanding that they are worshiping in a religion. When you speak on the authority of the world, and I want you to hear this, please, if you hear anything, hear this right now. When you speak on the authority of the world, you are submitting yourself. You are worshiping the world, the prince of this world. When you are connected and attached to this life over the life or the age that and the joy that is set before you, this is what you've chosen. You have submitted yourself to this. You can't be justified if you're submitting yourself to this world and the prince of this world. Get that language off your tongue. That language of diagnoses, that language of politics, and the behaviors of submitting to them because that's what's coming from your heart. If it's coming out of your mouth, it's coming from your heart. If it's coming out of your deeds, it's coming from your heart. If this is the way you think, it's coming from your heart. That is what you have submitted yourself to. That is what you are worshiping. I'm amazed that there are people who are still doing this, even in our assembly. So please tighten it up because this is your covenant. This is serious. You must be brought into a position where you have fully submitted yourself to Christ and this is no longer even a part of you. How can you be saved otherwise? You can't be saved if you're double-minded. You've got to pick a kingdom. You can't be in both kingdoms. They don't have to know that they're in a religion to be in a religion. Verse 9, whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. I'm going to entitle this False Prophet Part 1 because this video is all already quite long. And I want to make sure that you have time to digest what we're talking about and what this looks like at this point in history. The next video, I will speak specifically about this false prophet and what it looks like. What this false prophet looks like at this point in history. I will get very specific. So please listen to that video. The other thing I want to tell you is if you're listening to these videos and you're trying to keep all of this up in your head, it will not happen. You need to sit down. You need to write it out. You need to make sure that it's in black and white and that you can see that all of these pieces make sense, that all of these pieces fit together. You can't sit and lazily receive this. You need to actively get involved in your covenant, look up these scriptures, and understand the things that I'm saying. The problems come when people are just sitting there being spoon-fed by a pastor. You need to get in the word. You need to make sure, you need to test what it is that I'm saying. Make sure that there's nothing in the word that contradicts what I'm saying. Because if there is, then you need to ask me, how does this fit then? You need to question me. I'll be worth my salt, but you got to be worth yours. Please discern the things that I've said with God, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.